Dear colleagues, I want to share uh, one case which is uh, a really innovative approach of treating large macular holes. It is called auto-transplantation of retinal graft in treating of large macular hole. Here is my team um, which made this possible and I really thank them for that. The patient is female, 68 years of age. The right eye uh, has uh, undergone three operations for macular hole. The first one was FACO plus uh, pars plana vitrectomy, IOM, PO and gas. But unfortunately, the uh, hole did not close. Then we go for a second surgery, 23 gauge with fluid air exchange and the drainage of the hole and heavy silicon Oxan HD tamponade for three months. The macular uh, hole was closed. We then uh, removed the silicon and the uncorrected distance visual acuity is 0.6. The other eye was uh, the worst eye uh, because the macular hole was over 600 microns and function was uncorrected 0.05. So the chances for closure was really low. Um, bear in mind the first tie. So we decided to take a new approach. So this is the OCT of the first tie after the three surgical interventions and everything is okay. Uh, this is the left tie which we will need to operate and it is uh, the hole is approximately 647 microns. We see detached, a little bit detached posterior hyaloid. We see a thick ERM and we see cysts, uh, a lot of cysts um, in the wounds of the macular hole. This is the Lombroso uh, M-phase report. We can appreciate the retraction of EOM and the microcystoid edema around the hole and the large hole. This is the surgery. Uh, the surgery was combined of course. We removed uh, the patient lens because we know that we will tamponade it with silicone and uh, we all know that uh, in terms of one to three months after a silicone tamponade, uh, a silicone cataract will develop. Uh, so with our intentions to uh, go to the aura, it will be not possible without removing the natural lens. So the best approach is to remove the natural lens, implant uh, artificial lens and carry on the procedure. Now this is a standard FACO 2.2 millimeters. I uh, use Utrata uh, forceps from Goider. Uh, which is with really nice and fine tips. Uh, you just pinch the capsule and lead the rexis. So that's it, the rexis. I will spare the part of fake emulsification, of course. Now we will go to implant the lens. I like to implant the lens before I go for the vitreo part because I, that way I am sure that my posterior capsule will be safe. And when I use uh, ABOS 2 with the XL lens, there is no difference of the view, aphakic and fakic. So I think this is safer approach. Now this is a two-step trocars from Dork, which are reusable with valves. I totally recommend to use valve trocars because they give you a constant uh, IOP pressure, not leaking. You will uh, use a lot less uh, fluid inside the eye. Uh, this is standard report vitrectomy but uh, I will use chandelier of course which will be the next port I don't suture the cornea wound because there is no need for that 
This, is, this was the Infusion Canon one. The machine that I use is Constellation with IOP control. I find that really, really uh, uh, convenient and safe. Now this is a Alcon chandelier, really nice light, 25 gauge. And this is our posterior pole. Now I will do partial core vitrectomy to allow for space to use vitreous staining agent. Now this is the core vitrectomy. The light is only from the chandelier. Now I use triamcinolone to stain the vitreous because in that case I'm sure that there is a thick uh, hyaloid which I need to remove before I go to IOM peeling. I like to remove the vitreous from periphery to the center. This is 23 gauge system, 5000 cuts, Venturi. I use indentation with Kusaka depressor to clean the base. It is really important to have clean base because I know that I will put silicone here. When the natural lens is removed, this maneuver is really safe and I'm able to clean all the vitreous on the base. Now I go down in the middle. You see the fibers of the vitreous body. So as the OCT showed us, there was a partial um, detachment of the posterior high weight and really, really thick ERM. Now I try to vacuum detach the posterior hyaloid but with no particular luck. Still the trium alone helps me helps me to visualize the vitreous which I need to grab and pull. The vacuum is 600, the cutter is off, of course, and now I will switch hands in order to engage better the detached part of the hyaloid, and here is my luck, at least in some part of the hyaloid. So now I will detach it to the periphery because my intentions are to take retinal graft from the periphery. So I need to remove the higher weight at least in at least in that part from which I will take the graft. Now another attempt
to grab and detach the hyaloid but it is really sticky over the surface of the retina so I presume that in that part I didn't manage to release the posterior hyaloid you see the size of the hole the trim trium particles are there now I will clean the trium cinnamon in, or in order to leave space for dye which I will use to visualize the internal limiting membrane this is the place on which I plan to harvest the graft so I try to clean it as thorough as I can again cleaning of the base Here is the dye. I use Membrane Blue Dual from Dork, which is Brilliant Blue G with Tripan Blue. So, in theory, everything should be stained. Stained. Here I try to aspirate with Charles Flute Needle, which is Active Needle. Um, I pump fluid back to the needle with my finger in order to take the heavy brilliant blue G above the retina and you see we have um, ununiform staining so maybe there is still posterior hyaloid there Now this is a fine tip Eckert ELM forceps from Dork and I try to engage the peel Obviously, this is posterior high weight. In combination with EOM, because it's not well stained, 
but when you pull it it detaches like a sheet so definitely there is EOM there now second staining to see what we have built again active Charles flute needle You see, it is really tough to peel these membranes and the only way to peel everything is to peel the EOM. Still after second staining there is no sufficient staining so definitely there is a posterior hyoid there. In terms of ERM, what is epiretinal membrane? It is something that develops between the EOM and the posterior hyoid. We have conducted uh, electron microscopy on that type of membranes and we found that there is, macro, there is macrophages and fibroblasts. So the term thickened ERM is actually inflammation between EOM and posterior Highlight. Now I try to completely rem remove every remnants from that ERM you see how thick and well attached to the macular edges is that membrane now third time staining Again, membrane blue dual. Now you can appreciate the area of peeling. And still we have ELM to peel. Here it is. This is the sheet of the ELM 
finally. Now I'm pretty sure that at least in macular area everything is peeled. Now I will try to widen a little bit the peeling area to relieve the traction. Now I will try with one maneuver from macular translocation surgery. I use 41 gauge supretinal needle. I pinch the retina in far periphery around 12 o'clock in order to create artificial retinal detachment. I use for that purpose saline as fluid and I try to avoid puncturing the pigment epithelium and create a horridal bleed or elevation. So I just pinch the retina and my assistant gently injects a saline through 2cc syringe and now we'll see the detachment already created you see the shadow of the detachment Here it is. My next step will be with by manual technique to create a flap or graft. I use curved 23 gauge scissor in order to create the opening. I don't need to do any type of diatermy or uh, pre-laser the area because this is far periphery and the perfusion is really low and I don't expect to have bleeding. On the other hand it is not aura serrata because I need to have at least one vessel over my graft in order to orient the graft uh, position the site of the photoreceptors the outer retina or the inner retina so I cut a square graft at least one pupil diameter or maybe larger and now with crocodile forceps gently I will grab the edge of that graft and we'll cut it free from our harvesting area Now I just check if the size is right and then I will try to keep the graft properly orientated over the hole with PFCL.
now this is 23 gauge cannula and I will try to put PSL but it's tricky anything which is free floating uh, in posterior pole is really tricky to be placed somewhere now I switch the hands again I use crocodile forceps 23 gauge and I try to stabilize the graft with more PFCL again no luck now I will remove some of the PFCL again we'll try to hold the graft in place Now this is a 23 gauge fine tip spatula from Goeder which I will use to stabilize gently this graft over the macular hole or at least I will try Now I switched my hands and gently will press the graft over the macular area and will put the PFCL. Again no luck. Honestly. This is the trickier part from all the surgery to keep the graft on the desired space over the macula. Again, the spatula. All the time I try to maneuver it on the right position and the only thing that guides me is the vessel which I have above the surface of the graft now again I will try to hold the graft over the macula and will try to stabilize it with PFCL maybe now I will get lucky yes at last I have my graft over the macular area now with 23 gauge ELM forceps I will adjust the placement of the graft over the macular hole gently and now it is finally in 
to desired place. Now, the rest of the surgery will continue as regular uh, retinal detachment surgery with large horseshoe tear. I will laser the area from which I have harvested the graft and that spot was uh, chosen because the tamponite will be effective compared to the lower parts of the retina. In the far periphery, there is less blood perfusion, so no um, blood leakage would be expected. So I will avoid the diatermy and I will keep my graft perfused until the end of the harvesting. Um, I will not have any PVR activity because the RPE in the periphery is less prominent uh, under good um, tamponade uh, for a PVR activity compared to the uh, PVR activity on the posterior pole near the arcades. So three rows on green laser, then I will laser also the spots on which I had created holes with 41 gauge needle just for a precaution as a matter of fact I count on uh, the EOM peeling which normally disturbs the heads of Mueller cells to create some sort of inflammation which will help uh, in the process of uh, adhering the retinal graft over the macular hole. So now I will do partial fluid air exchange in order to drain all the fluid above the PFCL and to have a nice, nice dry spot where the lasers were done. When all the fluid is removed and just PFCL is left there, we will commence to implant the silicone oil, which in our case will be heavy silicone, Oxam HD. Now this is the implantation of the silicone. The silicone slowly covers all the area above the PFCL.
then after the air is gone we will continue to implant the silicone and remove the PFCL so we make a direct silicone PFCL exchange because the flap needs to stay there and this is the safest way to complete that This is the PFCL bubble, lowers his volume and you see how small it is. Now I will, will complete re, re, completely remove it. This is our first post-op the OCT we see that the flap is oriented with the right side and position above the retina we have almost complete closure of the wounds of the uh, macular hole this is the unface uh, OCT which shows our patch nice and uh, well positioned above the hole maybe a little bit on the side but still plugging the hole this is the Lombroso M face report which shows again the position of the flap the position of the hole under the flap on the right screen and we have improved corrected near vision acuity the function was 2100 or 0 0.2 with plus 8 diopter sphere this is due to the silicon tamponite Fournier and the Preo function was uh, 2400 which is 0 0.05 with plus, plus through diopter sphere so we uh, will continue to check this patient to see if the graft will m move or migrate uh, we will look for ERM formation and we will see how the function will improve or deteriorate so we think that uh, in uh, large macular holes these techniques could be feasible to be uh, used.